What do we have here? Patient, one would assume this being a hospital and all. You're in an emergency ward on a Saturday night, not a comedy store. You assume you're a fool. I assume you know something about spider bites. You assume correctly. As opposed to foolishly. What kind of spider? Small and hairy with eight legs and attitude. No, it can't be too serious if you took the time to count its limbs. The time I've been waiting here, I could have counted its individual body hairs. I didn't realise that you brought it with you. I assume, probably somewhat foolishly, that you have. Is it in there? No, more sort of on it. Smack bang on the health warning label as it happens. A little flatter than it was, but it was good enough to come along. Well, that looks nasty. What, the spider, the cigarettes, the packet, all the warning? I can't tell you too much about the spider, but the cigarettes, I'll get you every time. Well, I'd like to think the cigarettes will get me after the spider bite. Under your shirt. Little accident prone, are we? Well, your heart sounds OK. Let's take a look at the wound. Oh, it's certainly swollen and there does seem to be a mark of some kind. Well, the evidence would point to it being a spider due to the fact it was hanging off the end of my finger shortly before its demise. And do you think you could get something for the swelling? I'm going to need it later. Temperature's a little high. It's only one finger. I'm sure you can make do without it. Yeah, but it's a very important finger. Serge, can you take a sample to the lab? Thanks. Shouldn't be too long. Do you feel nauseous? A little. Hospitals make me feel that way, you know, all the blood. It's been quite a bit of that tonight. Saturday night and everyone's out enjoying themselves. Well, why in the hell do they insist on shooting and stabbing each other, overdosing on drugs and beating each other half to death? All part of the fun, I suppose. Personally, I just think it's to make my life hell. Think of the satisfaction you'll derive from your selfless contribution. A modern day Florence Nightingale and Mother Teresa all rolled into one. Well, I could always go home. Where would you be then without your poor little finger? About the same as I am now. Spider bite and no cure in sight. Well, you'll just have to be patient. <sighs> Listen, Doc, I've got an important appointment tonight. You could say it's a matter of life or death. But where's the nurse that's going to take this little hairy critter to the lab? We do have other patients, you know. So I hear. Here you are, Serge. It's a spider. <laughs> Is it dead? Yes. Could you get analysis on the species for me as quick as you can? You can't say being too quick around here. Our patient has a rather important appointment, a matter of life or death, apparently. More death than life, actually. Might get to keep that appointment yet. It's gone midnight. What kind of appointment have to keep at this time? Do you think you could get some ice for this? I really want to try and get this swelling down.
death and life? I hope so. Well, if you have a death wish, it's hardly worth me treating you, is it? Oh, I have a death wish, but it's not my death I'm wishing for. Well, then whose is it? Some guy. And what's he done to you? Nothing. But he's obviously done something to my employer. You can't be serious. You're a hitman. A somewhat melodramatic term and not particularly accurate. Because I don't actually hit them, the bullet does. So you're a murderer then? Even more melodramatic. Well, I guess I should call the police. But he's not dead yet. Although it is a competitive business. Are you telling me the truth? Absolutely. Why would you admit that? You see, now that we've entered into a doctor-patient relationship, anything said between us remains confidential. Ethics. Well, I must have ethics. What would you know of ethics? You're a hard killer, for God's sake. Every profession has its ethics. Mine, like yours, is a very old profession. Assassins have been selectively taking people's lives for as long as doctors have been trying to save them. Is that so? In fact, it's a symbiotic relationship. I try to kill them and you try to save them. One helps the other. So if my workmanship is substandard, you win. If yours is, I win. It's a win-win situation and we are both faithful to our ethics. It seems far from a winning situation for the gentleman you intend to kill. Well, that all depends. On what? This little fella. So by mistreating you, I could save a life? True. But you have your Hippocratic Oath. So by obeying your sacred doctor's code and ethics, you are contributing to the death of a perfectly healthy human being. Which is against my principles. A dilemma indeed. Looks like you have a customer. They call them patients in my profession. What about you? It's a personal thing. A mark, a target, hit. I'm more interested in the results than the terms. Stab wound to the buttocks, no less. It's not that serious, Doctor. I'm sure it's just a flesh wound. We'll take a peek just to be sure, OK? I'm sure I can manage, Serge. Only trying to help. I'm a bit of an expert in the area. The area of the stabbing or the buttocks? Both. Wouldn't be the first backside stabbing you've been involved in, would it, Serge? Certainly not. But a priest. Thank you, Serge. I think I can manage. You sure? Yes, Serge. That will be all. Spoil sport. Thank you, Doctor. This is a rather embarrassing position to be in. Not to mention uncomfortable. Well, let me take a look. Oh, it's not life-threatening, be pleased to hear. I can't remember any important organs contained within. It's a good job you're facing the way you were, Father. Otherwise, a vital organ might have been damaged. Then again, your idea of a vital organ is probably something with a keyboard and pipes. I'll give you an injection. Better than Serge doing it. To deaden the pain, and then I'll clean it and stitch it. Tell me, Father, why is there no hole in your cassock? I'm sorry? I don't see how that's any of your business. I don't even know who you are. Jack Higgins, at your service. I shouldn't imagine the good Father would be in need of any service you could offer. Probably not. Make yourself useful and hold that. Now, how does someone, excluding Serge and his friends, get stabbed in the backside? Let me guess. A wheelchair-bound, short-sighted butcher mistook your rump for a sirloin. Very funny, Mr Higgins. But tell me, have you ever been stabbed? Six times, but never in the arse. Six times? And shot seven. What line of business are you in, Mr Higgins? The extermination business. Vermin, mostly. Vermin? <laughs> I see. I'm not sure I do. I'll stitch you up now, Father. You saying you only exterminate vermin? Father, will you hear a confession? Do you want to make a confession? Now? Yes. <sighs> it's a little unusual, I mean. Lying face down, having your ass stitched together? This is the modern world, Father. You need to move with the times. You must adapt or die. And adapting to the times is something the church has been particularly successful at over the years. 
you needn't preach. It is my duty to hear your confession, if you're a baptized Catholic. Indeed I am. Let me make you feel more at home. Now, how does it go? Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And believe me, it's been a long time since my last confession. Yes, my son? I can't believe I'm hearing this. We are now bound by the sanctity of the confessional. Is that correct, Father? Yes, but there is another person present. I don't mind if you don't. You're burying your soul. Excellent. I now have a priest who is bound by the sanctity of the confessional and a doctor who is bound by the Hippocratic Oath. Neither can speak of what I tell you outside this room. Is that correct? And would we want to? Quite possibly, Father. What is it that you wish to confess, my son? A killing. A murder. He has, and he's about to do it again. You're a serial killer. You never really thought of it like that. I suppose you could put it that way. He's an assassin. A hitman. And he's going to kill again very shortly. That depends on the condition of my little finger, of course. Why are you telling me this, Nino? You don't really seem like you want to be forgiven. Unlike yourselves, it's not often I get to talk about my work, as you can imagine. Why do you do what you do? You preach for a living. I kill people, but I'm selective. I don't kill innocent people. An executioner, how noble. It is a noble profession, and a very old one. Just like prostitution. <laughs> uh, prostitutes. Where would we be without prostitutes, eh, Father? Keep still, Father. A little uncomfortable, Father. Oh, what do you mean? What do you think of prostitutes? They're, they're fallen. Lucky they always seem to land on their backs. But they're human beings, are they not? Of course. We're all God's children. All done, Father. I'll put a dressing on it. Would you like to sit up? How's that? That's a touch sore. You associate with prostitutes, Father? I associate with many people in my parish. But do you not long for the company of a woman? To be intimate with her? To touch her warm, soft flesh? To smell the aroma that is woman? I took a vow of chastity, Mr Higgins. Cheap perfume. The perfume nonetheless. Not something often worn by a priest. Now, let's put two and two together. You've been stabbed by a knife that didn't pass through your cassock, which would indicate you didn't have it on at the time. And you do smell a perfume. This is your confession, not mine. I see a dozen stab wounds a week. Not too many in the ass, I bet. No, I'll crunch you that. You don't need to say anything. I have nothing to say on the matter. What about the girl? What girl? The girl you were with at the time. Doctor, you're bound by confidentiality, but this man, my killer, he's bound by no such code. No, something far higher, Father. I'm very careful what I say and to whom I say it. Otherwise, my professional reputation, not to mention my body, would be shot to pieces. I failed to be convinced. What if I said I had an affinity with prostitutes? Soldiers and hookers. We both have our uses. Masonries have been doing the church's dirty work for centuries. But it seems they also use the services of other professionals and occasions too. We'll say nothing, Father. You have our word on it. The girl may be a prostitute. She's no less a person than you or me. Well... Oh, Christ, was she hurt? I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? She was underneath you at the time. Why did someone stab you, Father? I was with Magda, one of my parishioners. She helps out around the church. Yes, you're right. She also works as a prostitute. A 
see them in here all the time. Maybe the oldest profession, but it's still a dangerous one. Just like mine. Look, those, those poor girls, they're run only even by thugs with no heart or compassion. It was one of these people, these animals that stabbed me. So Magda gave you the odd freebie? Yes. No, look, look, it wasn't like that. Then what happened? I'm sure he wasn't enjoying doing what he was doing. Stabbing a priest who was in the compromising and helpless position that I was. Sounds like a nasty piece of work to me. Can't exactly tell the police the whole story, can you? That's why I came here. You have a reputation for discretion. Well, if I called in the police every time I treated a stab wound, no one would come here. It would send people to struck off doctors in filthy basement rooms to be butchered and contract God knows what. And I can't let that happen. I won't let that happen. Glad you told me that. By getting fixed up by some very dubious characters, now I can come here instead. Well, don't take it as an invitation. You're still a hard killer. Thought we were over that. Well, we're not. I have to go. I'm needed. Don't go anywhere further. You're going to need a tetanus shot. Just what you need. Another prick in your ass tonight. Getting back to the girl. After he stabbed me, I was just frightened and in pain. I grabbed my clothes to cover myself, and all the time he was just he was laughing and jabbing at me with his knife. Do you know his name? But he had an accent. What sort of accent? I'm not sure. European, perhaps? It was also confusing. I've been in a similar situation, but my result was somewhat different. What happened? My stab wound was a little higher than yours. And yes, it is painful. But I suppose pain is all part of the job. I pretended I was done for. And he came in for the kill. Then what did you do? Well, I practiced a thousand times in the military. In under half an hour, I was in some grimy basement with a dodgy vet stitching me up with fishing line. Again. Well, that's terrible. What is? Me getting stabbed in the back? Me killing him or the fit using fishing line? All of them, I suppose. So my result was somewhat different. As probably was our training. He was probably focused on forgiveness. Where's mine? He snarled something at me. I looked at Magda and she just said, go, father. Get out. I got to the door and I stopped. I didn't want to leave her there with that animal, but... Please, get out! Get me! Go! Oi! Come here! He went me down the hallway. I ran. <laughs> what else could I do? Oh, let's just hope she's OK. She works for him. She's no use to him dead. You'd have to be a real psycho to kill a girl for giving a priest a freebie, for God's sakes. You did not see him. What could I have done? What would you have done? What do you think? Have you no remorse when you commit those acts? No, not really. What do you feel when you kill someone? Just the recall. No compassion? In my world, compassion is weakness. And in battle, weakness is death. If that's your world, then it's truly a sad one. You could be living in a sad world, too, if it wasn't for people like me. You could be living under the rule of a religion band or a dictator. Where would all your values be then, Father? My values? along with my faith, would remain with me. And I believe they would. You could be a tower of strength to those suffering around you. But they wouldn't have to suffer 
if people like me were allowed to do their jobs properly in the first place. But that's when you're working for the government, protecting the people of your country. And what's not to say I still am? Are you trying to justify your position? No. Killing is my job. End of story. You... You commit mortal sin. We all commit mortal sin. All of us? I've never done anything that could be called mortal sin. Doctor, are you all right? What's the matter? No. What happened? Couldn't do anything. Died right in front of me. Tried to rob a security guard of a pub's takings and got shot. Stupid waste of a young life. It's a sad waste, Doctor. You're right. What about you? Don't see any sadness in those cold eyes. Well, then again, you are a killer, aren't you? I suppose you just think he got what he deserved. It would have been a lot sadder if the security guard had died. He was just trying to put food on the table for his family. No, it wasn't a man. It was a woman. She was just scared. She's just trying to defend herself. She shot him in the chest. Where's she supposed to shoot him? I don't know, the leg or the arm or something? That only happens in the movies. She's one scared lady who thinks she's going to be killed and the chest is the biggest target. He only had a replica pistol. What do you want me to say? Doesn't really matter, does it? A child is dead. A child? How old was he? Nineteen. Hardly a child, father. And certainly old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. And old enough to die for his country, which many have. You're a cold man. Maybe. The guy lying in the morgue instigated the whole sad situation. It must be horrible seeing someone die. I deal with the grief that causes families all the time. I'll probably be the one that has to console these people after I commit his body to the earth. How long you been in casualty, Doc? Come to that. How long you been a doctor? Been here nearly six months and I qualified two years ago. And you volunteered for casualty? Yes. Why? Because I felt it was my duty as a doctor. Very noble. Do you always fall apart every time someone dies? It affects me, yes. Try cosmetic surgery. You'll spend less time crying and make a damn sight more money. Do you really think I took up this profession for the money? You wouldn't be the first. There is a reason I do what I do and why I've chosen to do it. And what reason is that, Doctor? It's personal. Come, we're all being open and honest here. I said it's personal, but I'm certainly not doing it for the money. No, I wouldn't think so working in a place like this. I certainly didn't take up mine for the money. Doctor. You better sit down. I think you're right. Do you feel nauseous? A little. I'll get you something for that. Roll up your sleeve. And tell me, Mr Higgins, is your work well paid? Everything's relative. So what's the life of a person worth? I've been in places where life is worth the price of a bullet. If they couldn't afford that, a machete was used. What difference does it make? What price they pay? You've just seen a young man die for the price of a drug fix. How much... How much do you charge, Mr Higgins? To kill a person? You got someone you want to get rid of, Father? No! Of course not. Don't be shy. You can tell us. Remember, we're bound to silence by our oaths. Your secret will be safe with us. They said it's a secret. But you know it pays to advertise? Please, Mr Higgins. If you really must know, every job is different. I've killed people for a government pay packet. I've killed people for half a million dollars. I even killed someone for two bucks. May I ask who you killed for two dollars? It's a private matter. You really want to know? Yes. Well, it was a while ago. You're some sort of gangster. Owned a few whorehouses and a protection racket. The whole neighbourhood was scared of him. I don't know if the cops were scared of him or they just liked his girls, but either way, he did what he liked and he liked hating people. 
Why do people do these things? What happened? Well, a few people disappeared and everyone knew he was responsible. These weren't criminals or rivals. These are ordinary people with small businesses that wouldn't or couldn't pay for protection. Go on. Well, on this particular occasion, he picked on a corner store near where I live. The owners were Chinese immigrants. And they were already paying an Asian gang and couldn't afford to pay him as well. What did he do? He said they didn't have to pay. Well, it just goes to show that... He took their 14-year-old daughter instead. Oh, my God. There wasn't much left of her when he'd finished with her. What kind of world do we live in? Well, he doesn't live in it any longer, that's for sure. What, what did you do? You don't want to know. But I do. Suit yourself. Well, with him out of the way, I thought it was important to set an example. Because I knew it wouldn't be long before some other piece of garbage would try and fill the void. It was a messy business. I'm a doctor. The Lord makes me strong. He had a torture chamber in one of his whorehouses. It's where he took the girl. It was soundproofed for obvious reasons. This guy was so into pain. He had devices in there that I'd never seen before. I've seen some nasty stuff in my time. There was one I recognised. Wakey, wakey. That was ten seconds. You're a tough boy. I reckon you can last two hours before you die. You remember her? Look at that! Do you? I left him there squealing like a pig. And that's what he was. A big, gutless pig. You must have taken a considerable risk in doing that. From a professional point of view, it was stupid. But not from a moral point of view. Careful, Doctor. You can't be condoning murder. It wasn't even self-defence. But he was a cruel and sadistic murderer. Yes, but I became the judge, jury and executioner. Well, what about the people you kill in your professional capacity? In my professional capacity, I'm just executioner. So you gave the community a freebie? He wasn't a freebie. He said he did it for $2. Yes. If I'd done it for nothing, I'd be just another murderer. So I'm afraid I can't do freebies, unlike your dear Magda. He sounds very much like the type of man I encountered tonight. Let's hope not. What have we now? Busy night for the good doctor. Why would anyone volunteer for this? It's a vocation. You hear the call and you answer. Rather like yourself. Indeed. Have you ever felt the calling? A bit late for that, Father. In fact, I'd have to say I'm an atheist, wouldn't you? I'm not so sure. You punished a man... Killed, Father. Killed. And is that not punishment? You punished a man who perpetrated an evil and murderous act. Maybe many evil acts. Had he been tried before a judge in a court of law, his punishment in many places would have been death. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Well, in court an oath would have been sworn on the Bible. That would make it a court sanctioned by the church. Are you saying I carried out the Lord's work? It's possible. <laughs> hmm. 
never really thought about myself as being on a righteous crusade. But tell me, what... What actually drove you to do it? Could that not have been your calling? No. It felt more like anger to me. The calling comes in many forms. It wouldn't be the first time the mercenary has carried out the church's work. Nothing too traumatic this time? No, not for me anyway. Quite possibly for the patient. He's being stabilised and prepped for surgery. Well, what happened to the poor? He stole a car. And hopefully he was involved in a crash? He was indeed. Badly hurt. Not by the crash, but by the extremely large rock we were sitting on the back seat. <laughs> Thou shalt not steal. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Yes, and in this particular case, he took it away a couple of fingers and a major part of one ear. Sometimes it's hard to be sympathetic. I'd expect you'd like to lock him back in the car with the dog for another few minutes. I'd tie a pork chop around his neck and weld the door shut if I had my way. You're a very callous man, Mr Higgins. I find it helps in my line of work. It does sound a touch draconian. We're our own worst enemy at times. Indeed. Well, there's certainly been a car thief and a mugger who were their own worst enemies tonight. Even I have to laugh at the ones we get in here. I thought the car thief was quite amusing. And I don't suppose there's any humorous moments in your line of work, Mr Higgins? Yes, Mr Higgins. Do you find any humour in your work? There's the occasional moment of irony, but they're quite short as you can imagine. Such as? Well, there was this one time. I was employed by a government agency to take out a Colombian drug lord. He was very careful. But he was having a very fair with a model and that was his weakness. I took up a position across from his apartment. Even from there, I could hear them arguing and screaming all the time. He very kindly steps out on the balcony to smoke a cigarette. How considerate. Yeah, that's what I thought. An easy shot. <laughs> Taking a feed on his head. <laughs> Suddenly, he disappears out of the scope. What happened? His lover pushed him off the balcony. And then she threw herself up after him. My God, that's too much passion. <laughs> no, that's too much of their own product. They must have snorted a mountain of the stuff. I had a hell of a time getting paid because technically I didn't complete my contract. Is that what you were thinking when you looked down at them? Yes. I spent the best part of a month wasted shattering that moron in hot, sweaty and dangerous conditions. I did contemplate firing one into his skull though. Well, why didn't you? It wouldn't have made any difference to him, would it? Purely technical reasons. Too many people around the body. Oh, we must avoid collateral damage, must we? Absolutely. Besides, there wasn't a piece of skull big enough to put a bullet in. And he would be number what on your list of victims? I think the word victim is not entirely accurate. Surely if you kill someone, they become a victim. More of a completed contract. Is that really your world? Yes. Don't you have any emotions? I do remember being the only one that cried when we watched Dumbo as kids. Dumbo? A cartoon elephant with abnormally large ears. 
You said when we all watched it, are you from a large family? A very small family, in fact. An only child? Yes, just me. No brothers or sisters, no mother or father. That's me. So you're an orphan? Not really. I imagine one of my natural parents could still be alive. Have you made no effort to find them? I'm pretty good at tracking people down, as you can imagine. But in my case, my mother did a damn good job of leaving no trail. How did she manage that? I take you from St. Peter's, Father? Yes. Your predecessor ran the church for close to 50 years, didn't he? Yes, Father Paul. He passed away only recently. I know. I was at his funeral. What was he to you? Thirty odd years ago, he was summoned to his back door at one o'clock in the morning. And what he found on the doorstep was a cardboard box. And then it was me. So you were abandoned at birth? Yes. How sad. I wonder what could drive a woman to abandon her newborn. You have no idea who she was or what made her do it? By the time I was old enough to start looking, the trail had run cold. That's a shame. I believe everyone should know who their biological parents are. Have you looked into it? I did investigate. Made no headway? There has been the odd clue. The people at the time have either died or left the area. Well, surely you have some sort of hunch or instinct. Yes, I do, Father. Well, maybe ask what that is. I don't see why not. But you probably won't like what you hear. Why? It's up to you, Father. I fail to see why I wouldn't like what I hear. Father Paul arranged for me to go to an orphanage. He always kept in touch and gave me a present on my birthday. Perhaps, having found you, he felt like a surrogate father. Perhaps. The box I came in is still in the cell of the church, isn't it? So that's what he meant. Who? Father Paul. He took me down to the cellar not long after I arrived. He showed me where various bits and pieces were stored and then he pointed out a cardboard box on the top shelf. He said I was never to throw it out. Did he say why? He said one day someone would come for it and when they came I'd know who they were. How odd. Father Paul became a tad eccentric as his days wore on. I don't think it was that. What was it then? Look at me, Father. Look at me closely. What do you see? My face. Is it not familiar to you? My nose? My eyes? Your eyes? No. No, it can't be. Why can't it be? Were you not yourself in the company of a woman tonight? What makes you think Father Paul was any less lonely than you? Perhaps he too was weak of resolve on occasion. Are you saying... Yes, there's... A certain similarity. It's un undeniable. You'll find that his father's name was Jack. Father Paul, having found me, was asked to offer a name. You can't prove any of this. I think I could. Well, how now that Father Paul's passed away? He had an open casket at the funeral, didn't he? Yes. Father Paul left behind a lot of very devoted parishioners. Seems that's not all he left behind. <laughs> well, I was one of the many that approached the coffin that day. But I was probably one of the only ones that took a few of your snow white hairs. You've had a DNA test done? No, not yet. I still carry them with me. If I die, well, the proof will be no longer required. I can't believe it. Father Paul was so strong. He was an inspiration. Well, there's nothing stopping you being an inspiration now, is there, Father? A pharaoh never have his strength, his resolve. He was flesh and blood, like you and me. Where did the Higgins part come from? Well, that's where it does become a little bizarre, considering tonight's events. It's already more than a little bizarre. 
There was a, how shall I say, house of ill repute, close to the church. Mary Higgins was a worker there. She was a regular at the church, and that's how they met. It's just like... Nectar. Oh. Well, this is preposterous. Is it far? This whole story is preposterous. Is there really a likeness? There's a certain resemblance, but that's not enough to prove anything. Why would I lie? I don't know. What do I have to gain, an inheritance? We of the cloth take a vow. I know the vow. Do you have to excuse me? The spider bite, the good doctor is said to be treating me, is still making me feel nauseous. Feel free to talk about me when I'm gone. But not to anyone else, of course. What would he have to gain by such a bizarre story? I have no idea. I'll give you a tetanus shot. In the arm this time, Father. Do you think it's true? It's a definite likeness. I knew about the box. Would it really matter if it were true? A liaison between a highly regarded member of the clergy and a prostitute. It's not exactly something the church wants to see out in the open. And what about you, Father? I hear the way you talk about your Megda. There's more to your relationship than just a physical one, isn't there? Yes. Yes, there is. You're worried about her, aren't you? Well, of course, but what can I do? I just feel helpless. I could call the police for you. And then what? If he hasn't beaten her already, he will after the police leave. All I can do is pray. Well, I hope praying's enough. He sounds like a monster. He is. Some of the stories that I've heard chill the bones. I've asked, I've begged Magda to leave. The poor girl's alone from overseas. Too scared to run like a deer caught in the headlights. Another ambulance has just pulled up. I'll save you a call any second. And can you see what's happening with my spider bite? I've just thrown up my dinner and that's not something I normally do. Yes, you're looking a bit pale. But if it was deadly, I'm sure we'd know by now. Yeah, I'd be dead. Oh, you'll be glad to know that the lab's identified the spider. And we have the antivenom. Well, it's about time. The question is, should I administer it knowing what you intend to use that finger for? I tell you what, give it to me and I'll do it myself. I've given the odd injection before. What would cause you to give an injection? Various reasons. Struck off. He was. Not long after medical school. A little too fond of the bottle. You're still alive. And I have the scar to prove it. Sounds like things are hiding up. So it seems. Sounds like things are really hiding up. What's going on? There's some guy carrying on. There's someone on the gate and they could be covered in blood. Boys. Oh, don't know what it's him. Who? The man that stabbed me. Please wait here. Get me more saline. I'll need to stabilise it quickly, Serge. Okay. Do to her. She's a mess. Will she make it? I don't know. Her pupils aren't responding. Oh, Christ, Doc. 
Okay. Mr. Higgins. Keep pressure on the wound. You need help here. Like who? There is no one else. Blood pressure's dropping fast. Internal bleeding. Sit down, Father. I've got that. Come on, Father. There's nothing you can do here. Come on. I'll stabilise her as much as I can and then we need x-rays. Tell x-ray we'll be down as soon as we can. She's got the car crash victim, man. Oh, I don't care about him. Tell her five minutes. And while you're there, can you find a nurse to give me... Forget it. Anything I can do? Until she's x-rayed, I don't know what I'm dealing with. Here. You must save her. She's in a bad way. She deserved it. Nobody deserves this. A whore deserved what she got. Huh? She's useless, dead. Then why do this? As example. You will have to wait outside, Mr. Petrov. Igor Petrov. I'll wait here. She is my property. The doctor asked you to wait outside. And who are you? I'm a specialist. Do as I say and save her. That's not what I specialize at. What are you a specialist at? Look, it doesn't concern you. Now get out. Do you know who I am? I know who you are. I know what you are, and neither are very pleasant. You ask for trouble, my friend. Well, that wouldn't be the first time, and I'm not your friend. I make a bad enemy. And I shouldn't think a very good friend either. Well, I think we should call the police. The police? What will they do? You have no evidence I did this? You have no witnesses? But there is a witness. <laughs> you! Yes, me. If you value your position in church, you do nothing. Look, it is wonderful, I do. It's okay, Father. I'll handle this my way. Your way? Yes, my way. What is your way? You seem to consider yourself above the law, Petro. The law? The law in this country is nothing. I own policemen. They do my bidding. Homicide detectives? She must not die. The police only enforce one kind of justice. There are two kinds. There's the Lord's justice. OK, make that three. Where I come from, justice is dispensed by the strong, the powerful. Blood pressure's dropping. You took an oath as doctor. Save the girl. I've had just about enough of being bound by oaths tonight. Come on, Mr. Petra. Let's leave the good doctor to do a work. How about I buy you coffee? You're a fool. But I drink your coffee. Big, sir. Perhaps we got off on the wrong foot. We do have something in common, you know. Well, do we? I doubt it. You'll be surprised. I don't like surprises. How unfortunate. I'm very good at surprises. She's as stable as she's gonna get. Father, uh, can you give me a hand? We're gonna take her down to X-ray. Of course. Do you think she... think she's gonna be okay? Father, she's in a really bad way. You will try. Of course I will. I took an oath, remember? Look at that. That man's an animal. He deserves nothing. He deserves nothing. You don't say he deserves to die. You can't say that. Because he has everything I believe. Pulse is getting weaker. Sometimes I want to see justice. Real justice. The kind of space one, Mr. Higgins. I know it's wrong, but when I see something like this. The Lord works in mysterious ways. I wonder what Magda thinks of the Lord and his mysterious ways. 
Test of faith, perhaps? This is a test. A test for all of us. In her case, it just might be the ultimate test. Victor. Looks like we have the place to ourselves. It would appear so. So what is it we uh, have in common, Mr. Higgins? Jack Higgins. Mm -hmm. You said you were a medical specialist. No, I said I was a specialist. Not medical. What then? Extermination specialist. Rats, cockroaches, all that kind of thing. I get rid of all kinds of hideous creatures. So, uh, what do we have in common? We're bad killers. I'm sure I've seen you before. I have a good memory for faces. Comes in handy in my line of work. You're saying I look like vermin? Like pest? Is this what you're saying? More like a parasite than a pest. You're in dangerous territory, my friend. Dangerous territory, we know our old mates. I could kill you here now! That would be stupid, even for you. It's a public hospital on a Saturday night, there's people everywhere. Besides, one of your girls is clinging to life by her fingernails. She has no fingernails. Or fingers. You're a nasty piece of work, Petrov. But you lack imagination. Pulling out fingernails, cutting fingers off. And went out with the Dark Ages. We all have our dark side. Indeed we do. You're an evil bastard. Like I said, we all have our dark side. You're an animal, Petro. All these names. I love that woman. Love? She is a whore. You said loved? She's dead. Then you have failed at your work. Nobody could have saved her. You were very thorough. Fractured skull, brain damage, massive internal injuries. I'm surprised you've made it to the hospital. In hindsight, it would have been better if she had not made it to hospital. You could have just dumped the body. Nobody would have known. Incriminate yourself by coming here. I came as a concerned employer. You forget I was there, Petra. It is your word against mine. And just remember, you, a man of the cloth, were enjoying the pleasures of the flesh. Who will they believe? I'm going to call the police. And what would you tell them? That a girl has been tortured to death, and I believe that you are responsible. All circumstantial, of course. And I, of course, will furnish a different story. Such as? I walked in. I saw one of my girls being tortured. I tried to save her. We fought. <laughs> the father received a flesh wound and ran away. I can't remind you have to even think of these things. I tried in vain to save one of my employees from the horrendous injuries inflicted by this sick priest who is obviously some kind of religious zealot. I even brought her here. Yes, I think that will do nicely. It's all lies, Petro. You know, it's all lies. Then why were you with a whore? Priest! I'll be outside if you should need me. What the hell would we need you for? Never know. What do I do? He's a wily one. 
You've got to help me here. If this goes to court, it'll get messy. We'll be all caught in, you know that, don't you? I can't afford anyone digging around my past or present. And what is this? It's a diathermy machine. Electronic scalpel. and the church would be over, but I'd gladly sacrifice that to see justice done. Very admirable. And you, Doc? No, no, I can't. Oh, for heaven's sake, you've just seen what he's done. I'm sorry, Father, I can't. Why not? You're a doctor. Any jury... You asked me before well, how long I've been in this profession, why I volunteered for this job. Yeah, you said you've been practicing, what, a couple of years? Don't you think that's a relatively short time, considering my age? I've got something in common with Magda. I used to be a working girl. Thank God. What happened? My mother was ill for a very long time and I had to look after her all on my own. There wasn't much I could do at 16 to afford the drugs she needed. <laughs> and when she died, life meant nothing to me after that. One thing led to another and one junkie hooker. through this. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. If I'd be stronger in my faith, Magda would still be alive. Petros is saddest. Sooner or later, Magda or one of the other girls would have died. Some probably already have. He's right. Girls like me, like them, no one would miss. How did you beat it? The drugs? Sister Agneta. Crazy German nun. She ran a drug rehab centre. If it wasn't for her, I'd be dead too. She never gave up on me. You were lucky. When I finally got clean, I stuck around and helped her while I studied. What's wrong? This gives us a problem. Yes. What is that? Well, if Petrov's lawyers dig up my past, think how my testimony will look. An ex-drug addict whore who's trying to get a revenge on a sadistic pimp. Your evidence would do more harm than good. Seems that Petrov has us right where he wants us. There's not a damn thing we can do about it. He will be brought to account, eventually. The question is, how many more defenceless women will he torture before then? Well, what can we do? I don't want Magda's death to go unpunished. An eye for an eye, Father? Am 
must be a way. There is a way. We do it ourselves. You can't me. It's up to you. Are you saying we kill Petrov? Why not? You both been saying how evil he is. You act now or he walks free. I could not be party to murder. Why the hell not, father? Your mob have been putting swords at people for centuries. Inquisitions, crusades. The list is long, father. You're about one end of the knife tonight. Now it's time to hold the other. You want him dead, don't you? This is ridiculous. Is it? Is it really? You both agree he deserves to die. Even I think he should die and I'm a professional killer. Well, then why don't you kill him? Because I'm a professional killer. Exactly. A professional father. It's my job. That's what I'm paid to do. I need an employer to pay me to do it. Can't you make an exception? I told you before, I'd be just another murderer. As opposed to a professional killer? Yes. <sighs> Isn't that splitting hairs? Maybe to you, but I don't work for free. Do you expect us to pay you? Listen, I don't like the guy either. I think he's a piece of garbage. But I tell you what, you want to chuck in a buck a piece? That will make us conspirators. Co-conspirators, in fact. And equally guilty of murder in the eyes of the law. And in the eyes of the Lord, I would imagine. Most definitely. You would be as guilty as if you were running the blade through his black heart yourselves. And you will be his judge and jury. And you as executioner? It's up to you. I'm going to see if he's still around. Because if he's gone, this whole situation is going to be a lot more difficult. Are you going to do it here in the hospital? You won't suspect it. I told him he's stupid to kill me here. Yeah, you, you intend to kill him here? Absolutely. It, you had that in mind when you said it to him? One must plan ahead in the business we are all in. We're not all in yet. No? Well, I suggest you take another look at those x-rays. How can someone do that to another human being? Man's inhumanity to man. So much torture. Pain. Just like Jesus on the cross. Maybe the world will never change. Maybe. But what about our present dilemma, Father? I feel such rage within, but... Can I con condone murder? Can I sentence another man to death even though he's murdered the woman that I love? You really did love her, didn't you? I could feel my heart pound every time that I saw her. And I'm a priest. And then one day, there was no escaping it. It was a love. She made me leave the church so we could be together. You, Doctor, I have a vocation. A reason for being. I realized you were scared. You said before you were beginning to doubt your faith. So what's it to be, James? Do we sacrifice everything we believe in, or do we let a killer walk free? <sighs> do we follow our beliefs? I don't follow our hearts and commit ourselves to the death. Magda. Your Magda has been murdered. Should we... Take up the cudgel. Perhaps Mr. Higgins was right when he said he wanted nothing of being the judge and jury. It seems a physical act itself monstrous, so it is. It's far less difficult than giving the order to do it. There must be another way. Divine intervention. Can we really afford to wait for that? We are damned if we do, and we are damned if we don't. Perhaps it's only the interpretation. We well, best interpret it one way or the other. He's on his way back. Jack?
What are you doing? Just looking. Anything bigger? On the top shelf. This is not going to go away. Whatever we decide, it'll haunt us. Forever, both of us. I know. Well, Doc, you've got enough drugs in here to do it yourself. You don't even need me. You'll save yourself a buck at the same time. How can you be so flippant about the life of another human being? I thought we all decided that he was an animal. So, have we made a decision? Are we going to forget all about this inconvenience? Some of us are. It is not good enough. Well, it's as good as it's going to get. So, who is going to forget this little problem? Little problem. In the real world, these things happen every day. She was a good person. Yeah, just because you... It was more like that. You don't have to explain, Father. Not to this creature. So I am now some kind of creature. Am I? One that crawls. A cockroach. <laughs> you do not think, Doctor, that I am offended by your analogy. Like the cockroach, I am a survivor. And I see no one in this room that challenges that survival. Perhaps you haven't looked hard enough. A doctor, a priest, and a pest exterminator. Think about it, Petrov. You're a cockroach and I'm a pest exterminator. Oh, so you think you could kill me? Many have tried and many have died. This one hasn't. You, you all live in this fine country. You are soft. We'll all forget about tonight. And what if we don't? You will end up like a whore in the morgue. Hmm? But in your case, Doctor, maybe I have a little bit of fun. You're an absurdity, Petrov. You out of the unfeeling one. You're a hypocrite. Shame on you. It wasn't absurd. <sighs> it was love. Love! What did she know about love? It's only now I realize what I had. I was blinded by my own faith. It's something you wouldn't understand. Mm, perhaps not. I live with this. It is my bird. As unfortunately are you. So what do you intend to do with this? Kill us all here now? Perhaps. What's to stop us all walking out of here? Amongst other things. I do believe we have a Mexican standoff. We know you killed the girl and you have us here with a gun. And more importantly, a quiet one. You'll never get away with it, Petrov. Fortune favors the brave. Brave? Well, what am I? A callous, murdering piece of garbage that kills defenseless women. Brave, you make me sick. Strong words, Doctor. But I made you an offer which you declined. It is you who are forcing me into this situation. You tortured Magda for your own pleasure. As you, Petrov, you're responsible. <laughs> yes, the girl. I'd almost forgotten. Well, seems like we have a difficult situation on our hands. Difficult? I kill all of you, and I walk out of here. I see no difficult. No, not for you. But for the father and the doctor, they have a dilemma. And I should care. Care? <laughs> I'm 
surprised you even know the word. Anyway, this is not about you, it's about them. They have morals and principles, ethical people that don't condone murder. What do you mean? There's only one way, and it'll cost you a buck a piece. Will he give us some time? Well, that's up to him. Will you allow them a few moments? You are going to kill us after all. They need time to compose themselves before they meet their fate. And what about you, Mr. Higgins? Don't you need a little time to compose yourself? No, not really. I'll give you a moment. Perhaps I'm not the cold, sadistic killer you think I am. Take two moments. Take two moments, even. Enjoy yourself. You interest me, Mr. Higgins. You are about to die, and you show no fear. Perhaps I won't die. Perhaps the good father will produce a miracle. He does have friends in high places, you know. Oh, ho, ho. You believe in God? No, I don't. But maybe I'll know shortly if that was a mistake or not. Is the coast clear? We don't want anyone gate crashing our party, do we? Forgive me, Lord. Conveniently, it is. We have a deal. Deal? Isn't that what you hired me for? May God have mercy on his soul. Doesn't that defeat the purpose, Father? I was hoping you condemned to eternal damnation. Well, I hope he rots in hell. Good girl. That's very probably will. Good. All's well that ends well. What are we going to do with his body? It's a hospital. He's just another one that didn't make it. What did you inject him with? Morphine. Very clever. For all intents and purposes, a heroin overdose. And won't merit another look. He walked in off the street and died. How sad. I'll write out the death certificate. What's that? I feel two syringes. One with morphine, the other with adrenaline. And a large dose is also lethal and undetectable. Exactly. Time of death? Don't think that a time's arrived just yet, Doctor. Oh, some kind of hitman you are. We have backup. That. Die, you bastard! <coughs> Feel better? <laughs> well, I can think you can safely say he's dead now. Right, well. Let's start again. Time of death. Tough boy. Keep writing. He's definitely dead now. Time of death again. Two sixteen. What have I done? Earn yourself a refund, Father. That's what you've done. Cause of death. Suicide. People do strange things when they're on drugs. I'd better call the police. Just tell them you walked in, you found him dead. They won't care. One less gangster for them to worry about. What about you? I'm leaving. I think it seems a lot better, and I have a large sum of money to pick up. Somebody wanted him dead, 
almost as much as you. Thanks for your help. felt one end of the knife tonight. Now it's time to hold the other end. to eternal Dalmatians. We're <laughs> 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 still rolling, still rolling. It's undeniable. And cut it in. Cut it in. Cut it Father Paul, finding me, was asked to offer a name. If I knew my next line, I'd be able to say it. Well, uh, the plane saved me. Are we still rolling? Are we still rolling? Are we still going? Oh, hang on. Marker. Okay, Mark. Top. That was set. Action! Alright. Where we going? <laughs> you made an oath! To God! What the hell? Wrong life, wrong life, wrong. They have principles and morals. Ethical people that don't condone murder. What do you mean? <laughs> 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 